Hello everyone and welcome back to another build tutorial where we will be building a base encounter. Super useful for displaying time like this or pretty much any other metric in Minecraft, but first let's get to what even is a base encounter and how to use it. So currently this counter is counting in base 10. That means each subsequent layer is worth 10 more than the last. So the first layer is worth one input or with that timer I've got on there, one second. The second layer is worth 10, so each light is worth 10 seconds. And then the third, a hundred, fourth, a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand, or as many as you want. Being a base end counter, this means that these numbers are completely customizable. So instead of being worth 10, we can make it worth anywhere between 1 and 15. If we go back here, you'll note that each layer has a lectern that lets you customize the base. So if we go down to the first layer, you see it's on page 10, meaning it's counting in base 10. If we change that back to say page 5, that means it's counting in base 5. And every 5 inputs, it counts up to the next layer once. We can also change say the second layer to base 2, meaning it's a binary counter, meaning that every second input, it increases to the next layer. So you note, know, second input comes in, increases to the next layer. The final feature of this uh, counter that is for the actual user to use is a reset button which is entirely down to personal preference whether you have it but it allows the whole clock to be reset I think it's pretty useful and I'm probably going to use it to see how long it's going to take me to record the rest of this video so time starts now so in this tutorial I'll be giving a small explanation of how each stage works as well as how to build it if you're looking for a specific stage, there'll be links to the timestamps in the description for each one. First, we'll start with the analog RS latch, which stores the redstone power, allowing us to add to it. First, place these four blocks like this, two comparators facing opposite directions. Make sure their output is facing into a block like that, and redstone dust on the other side. The purpose of this stage is to allow us to, as I said before, store a redstone power level. So we put an input like this, and you note on F3, it says power 13 on the right under targeted block. And then we take the input away. It maintains its input at both sides at power level 13. This second step, this addition circuit, is a fair bit more complicated than the first. Basically, we want to add one to the power level in our RS latch, like this. So you note the power level is zero. When we click this, we take an input from here, and the power level increases to one. In Minecraft, we really only have the ability to subtract redstone power levels using a comparator in subtract mode. So we need to convert the equation with a plus sign or an addition into an equation with only minus signs. I'll show the formula for this on the side of the screen as well as a link to a video down in the description that will give you a better explanation of this with more time. But for now, let's get into building this stage. First, place blocks all around like this. Place one block up like that. Comparator with the two prongs into this block, one prong into this block in subtract mode. Another comparator, one prong facing into the comparator we just placed, two prongs facing out here, also in subtract mode. Place a cake here to give a power level of 14. A repeater here on two ticks, because that's the amount of ticks it takes for a comparator update, and one redstone dust. Now this redstone dust is our input, so we add a input less than two ticks here with an observer facing into it. So this is a single input, single tick input being converted to two picks he ticks here. We right click on it and it increases in power level. So this third stage, the reset circuit, is a bit simpler. Basically, we want to take an output from our stored power level and if that power level is greater than the selected base in this lectern, then we want to pull this piston back, which stops the RS latch and drops our power level. So let's get into the build. Basically, you want to take two blocks like this, one block like that to place your lectern on, it doesn't have to be there anymore. Just take a comparator output like this, one prong facing here, comparator like this in subtract mode, and then face that into a block with a piston like so. Now the piston shouldn't be extended yet because we need to take a book and quill and place it in this lectern. 
need to write something in this book and quill. You don't actually need to write anything important. You just need to go all the way to page 15 and write one character. You can sign it if you want, but basically you just press done, place it in the lectern, and now you can select the base you want to count to. So we'll count to base 5. So this uh, piston is now extended. We are currently at 4, so if we increase the power level by 1, the piston retracts and extends again, resetting the circuit. So at this point, the redstone counter will work, and you can set a base on your lectern and count all the way up to that base before it will reset itself. But if we want to take an output up to another layer, like you just saw there, or we want to take an output when this piston retracts and it resets, then we need to build what's known as the counter pass-through circuit. This circuit takes a pulse when the piston retracts and extends it through to the layer above it. It's pretty simple. All we do is place a redstone torch on this block next to the piston, a block next to that with a repeater running out of the redstone torch, repeater runs into a block placed on the lectern, redstone torch on this side of the block, another block above that, and a redstone torch there. And you can place one block here for each layer above this one. What this does is when the piston retracts, this redstone torch turns on, powering this repeater, unpowering this, and powering this, which on the next layer above would power this block, which powers the input for the circuit. Last but not least is the reset circuit. This is a circuit that allows us to push a button, like you see over there, and reset the whole counter. If we go over the back here, you can see it's pretty simple. Basically, you take an input here, which toggles this redstone torch to off, and turns both these redstone torches on, which fully powers this block here, powering this comparator to 15, which will cause the RS latch to continually increase in power until it reaches 15, or where the, the power level that you have set in your lectern causing the piston to retract. So even on power level 15, and you see if we increase this to say 5, power level 5, when we press this button, power level increases all out to 15, the piston retracts, and the, surf, uh, the whole circuit is reset. Let's get into a quick build. So basically you want to place a block here with a redstone torch. This will be our input. This is obviously on the back side of the build. Then we take a redstone out, line out from that, powering this block here, and you run that into a redstone torch on either side of the block. One block above this redstone torch, place another redstone torch on that block, and now we can take the input for our reset system right here. So if you run a line in, and we want to add a pulse extender. This is important for when you're running like above base 10 or so. It doesn't really matter at base 2, but it needs to be at least a f like 10 ticks or so. So pulse extender with these two comparators, and then a button input, and the system will reset. So layering each segment above each other is pretty simple. It's uh, literally just the same build, build straight above the next one, but I'll build the first small RS latch to get you started. So you can place the blocks straight above all the things that you already have in place. Place your two comparators in. Remember that they're powering the block directly. And that's your next layer. Now you obviously want to build the rest of it, including the reset latch coming up, but this should get you started. So now that we've built the whole counter system, we can take an output for a display or whatever we really feel like. So this line here, running from the opposite side of the lectern, is the output. So run a line out of this. Redstone on top of that, and redstone lamps like this will give an output just like you've got here. And you see an output of 6, so it's obviously going to count 4, but if we reset it, and then give an input, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, like that, just exactly how you'd expect. And again, if you want to layer, then you just do the exact same sort of output. So I just want to thank you guys so much for watching this video on this decimal count. I really hope that you actually find a use for it in your world. I think it's really cool, and it... I honestly really like it for counting clocks like this. I will use it for a race timer so that I can easily work out how long it took me to do a lap. But honestly, it's just a cool build, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.